I'm David Catching, and we're at the Rancho de la Luna in Joshua Tree, California. You know that's the way it's got to start, right? <laughs> Here we are at Rancho de la Luna. <laughs> I should probably take these inside, but um, this top Gorilla amp is what Jesse recorded the first Eagles of Death Metal album guitar on. Really? Yeah, he left it here, and I don't know why it's not inside. I think it's just as good outside right now, but. I have a, uh, a bathroom that the Arctic Monkeys paid to have remodeled. I mean, that's not what they actually, they just paid me for the studio time and remodeled that. The baby I got at the thrift store for 50 cents, and it's definitely the best 50 cents I've ever spent in my life. It watches the front door. So if anyone comes in to steal anything and looks up, they're just gonna go like, mm -hmm. I do get kind of random people coming up to take photos of the sign or like knocking on the door. Hey, I wanna come in and look at the studio. I came from Germany, and that's a total bummer. Yeah, just so people know, I fucking hate that. You gotta have the psychedelic lights. Well, maybe it's not working right now, or it has to warm up. Maybe we'll come back. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. It's rocking. We're always experimenting, and it's great because, you know, plugging things up that shouldn't go together, and a lot of, I have lots of malfunctioning in gear, like old amps and stuff, so it's, it's like, oh, this keyboard doesn't quite work, and that amp kind of sucks because it's dying. So let's put a couple of weird pedals in and see what happens. And that's a lot of people get pretty interesting things going from that. I mean, a lot of songs have been mic checks. You know, it's like, oh, is that mic working? And they set up something weird. And then the next thing you know, they're inspired to write a song. So a lot of it comes from broken stuff. One cool thing I have is the very first Royer tube mic that he ever made that's his prototype and that's that's the best sounding mic in the house the thing is crazy awesome and that's used on every single session for sure Caius bought this microphone as well that, they wanted this mic and they wanted the this 414 so they bought both of these mics for their sessions mostly we we had like 57s and 58s which are awesome on everything anyway but like we had a 414 that Caius bought and trade for studio time he's like well we can either pay you for studio time but we need like a good mic one good mic for recording so they bought that which we still have and yeah i think that was about it and then later we started just acquiring little bits of gear here and there that's the drum kit that almost everybody's used since we've got it we probably got this in like 96 i think and Pretty much everyone's played it. My pedal board, I always keep a Wawa and a Rotovibe, and this thing always stays. This is my, I think this is my fa favorite of all, which is saying a lot because I love all the Earthquaker stuff, but that one never leaves the pedal board. Actually, over the last probably 10 years, people have been very, very kind in supporting the place. I guess they like a lot of the music that's come through here, and they know that I'm not super wealthy so they're like yeah well we'll help you get along and like earthquaker has been the coolest tc electronics has given me a lot of cool stuff to use um, yamaha's given me a lot of guitars gibson's given me guitars so i've got tons of stuff but i really haven't purchased a lot of it because people have just you should you should have this so that when people come there they can make cool albums So there's special drawers that are filled with little magic devices and like in this one, look, look what we have. We have almost every Earthquaker device. Oh, the other ones that I don't have in there are right here. So I think I have one of every Earthquaker device and they get used at every session. And I've been using the bellows a lot on touring stuff. I really love that pedal a lot. I mean, I love all the pedals, but those, this one I've been using the most in Eagles. 
I mean, you'd have to talk to Josh Homme. <laughs> you'd have to talk to Josh Homme about the Desert Sessions, but yeah, I think he, I think he was kind of inspired by the loosey goosey style of recording that we had, like the Earthling sessions. We'd like come on up and you know jams. Like most bands weren't like, yeah, we're a band and we have to play with each other and nobody else. And we we're just like, yeah, come on up. We're just making music and recording. So. I think it was just, he decided like, yeah, this would be cool to do. And then he, he was like, what would be funnier is if it's a bunch of people that have never met that I like, that are great musicians, I'll just throw them out here the weirdest place in the weirdest studio and see what happens. Some old Earthling stuff from like 96, it looks like. And then we got like some Earthlings with Dave Grohl playing drums, some Caius when we, uh, our tape machine went down when they did some recording here, and we we put it on. Uh, what, what was what was the format called? Uh, the, where they use the beta shit? Adat. Adat. Yeah. You can cut that. makes makes me look dumb. And then we have the Adat formatted uh, <laughs> kind of shit. <laughs> no, but so I keep telling Josh to grab these, but he he just leaves them, which is cool because most. Like the kids that were here were freaking out that I, we had all this stuff. But the, the desert sessions are, are so fun because it, it's great to see all these people just get thrown into the fire. And like one, uh, one, one session, I, I can't remember if it's like eight and nine or something, but we had a couple of people back here writing songs and just laughing their asses off. And on the front porch, there were people writing a song. And then we were cutting a song and then Goss and PJ Harvey were up at the other house writing a song. And that day we recorded six full songs. Like, and, and in between that, when they took a five minute break, they were like, check, check the mic. And I was like, oh, and I just turned on the synthesizer and put up this like quick synth thing. You know, like, yeah, is it working? And they're like, yeah, and Josh came and he's like, what the fuck is that? And I'm like, oh no, man, I was just checking the mic. Like, no, no, what the fuck is that? It sounds awesome. And then we made a song out of that. So like, it was the most incredible day of, of recording because it was just nonstop inspiration and, and going, you know. A lot of musicians are from cities, so when they come out here, it, it is that quiet and the beautiful skies. Um, and also, if you're recording in LA or, or, or any major city, typically, there's like 20 awesome shows going on that night or your friends are all in town so people are stopping by or like, yeah, we should go because we have to go see so-and-so play at whatever, you know? And out here, there's not really a whole lot going on. I think it's just a bit of relaxation and getting away from everyone. <laughs> 